Hi! In this video, I'll attempt to measure the wavelengths of lasers with simple inexpensive tools. The wavelengths, colors of lasers are measured in billionths of a meter, but it should be possible for me anyway. Hopefully, I will be able to prove that this laser is badly mislabeled. There will be a lot of lasers this time. I even have to be in front of them, the most risky place near any laser. Always wear safety glasses for this. Do not trust the safety label alone, as I will show later. For the first test, I will use my favorite color, the 532 nanometers from a common green laser. These are fairly complicated inside and should have a stable output centered around 532 nanometers. With a C47, I can make this laser stay on. Some call it a clothespin, but it's so much more. With two, I can even level the laser. The next item is a diffraction grating. This one has 500 slits per millimeter and you can find one for just a dollar plus shipping on eBay. For the experiment, I need it to be upright. What to do? C47 to the rescue again. Now for the setup. The diffraction grating needs to be at a known distance from the wall I have chosen. I will use 100 cm since that's the reach of my big ruler. There we go, the diffraction grating is parallel with the wall and set at exactly 100.0 cm. Next step is to send the laser beam through the grating and onto the wall at a right angle. This splits the laser beam into several beams. What happens here is that light is electromagnetic waves and whenever a wave is sent through a row of slits, the waves will be bent out and start to interfere with each other. In the dark areas between the bright spots, the electromagnetic waves cancel each other out. In the bright spots, they are in perfect sync. With this pattern, we can calculate the wavelength of the visible light, simply by measuring where the waves are perfectly synchronized. For the calculations, I need to know the distance between the first dots on each side of the center dot. The centers of the dots are a little easier to find precisely with safety goggles on, since the dots are much smaller. In this case, it's between 55.1 and 55.2 cm. Let's call it 55.15 cm. Seen from above, the setup looks like shown here. The length between the wall and diffraction grating is 100 cm. The distance between the dots is just over 55 cm. From these, we can calculate this angle. Here's something important we need to calculate in radians, not degrees as we are used to. It's easy, I'll show you how. Here's the formula we can use for it. Putting the numbers from the experiment into it, we are ready to do some math. I will just use Windows Calculator. First, we need to change it from standard to scientific. Videnskabli, since mine is in Danish. It is set to degrees here, but as mentioned, we want radians. Rad in short. Now, just type in the numbers. 55.15 divided by 200 equals... I'll use the arctan function on this result and we have the angle in radians. Nice! Oh, you can use a spreadsheet too with this formula. Spreadsheets should use radians as standard. Alright, with this angle known, we can finally calculate the wavelength. D is the distance between the slits in the diffraction grating. In this case, 2 micrometers. Let's see how close I am to the 532 nanometers on the label. The result is in meters. By multiplying by a billion, the result is turned into nanometers. Aha! Uh -huh. Science works! I have just confirmed the wavelength of the laser in my kitchen, within a third of a billionth of a meter. Amazing, right? Let's try another color. Here's an old helium neon gas laser. It's a red laser with a stable wavelength just under 633 nanometers. This one has a wider spread. It seems to be 66.6 centimeters. The green one was 55. Crunching the numbers I get... Oh, I'm getting sloppy here. It's almost a whole nanometer off. Before I test the suspicious laser, let me just quickly test this unlabeled one. Looks like a tighter spread. Ugh, 
horrible beam quality, but it seems like 41.3 cm to me. Here are the calculations. Not bad. If you are a laser enthusiast, you've already identified it as a Blu-ray laser. I bought it as a 405 nanometers Blu-ray laser pen with a power below 5 milliwatts. Wavelength confirmed. Let me compare it with the suspicious laser, which claims to be 435 nanometers, 30 more than the Blu-ray laser. It should spread a little more. Hmm, do you see what I see? They seem to be very close. Measuring the dots from the 435 nanometers laser, it's clear that this is just a common Blu-ray laser. Let's call it a typo. There is, however, a much more serious problem. Did you notice how it appears much brighter than the under 5 mW laser pen? According to the label, it has a similar, fairly eye safe power below 5 mW. Time for a crude power test. Any laser is an eye hazard when sent through a magnifying glass, but even with this help, a true below 5 mW laser will struggle to pop a balloon. So, following the label, this one should struggle too. Uh. Um, indeed. It popped the balloon way too fast for its power rating. Under the perfect conditions, even a weak laser might pop a balloon. Almost knocked over the magnifying glass. But not this fast. A more demanding test is lighting a match. Even with a black tip match and through a magnifying glass, a less than 5 mW laser just doesn't have the power for it. It's impossible. How about the other one? Well, it's not my most powerful laser, but it's clearly more than 5 milliwatts. I wouldn't be surprised if it is 10 times more, 50 milliwatts or even higher. I just don't have a laser power meter to measure it. Dear Santa. That makes it a more hazardous class 3B laser. Actually, it is labeled as such in small print. This label is at best a joke. A dangerous one, that is. The truth is more likely that many countries only allow relatively safe lasers under 5 mW, so higher powered ones are sold as being weaker. I don't mind getting overspec lasers, I just hope people always treat any laser safely. Never trust the label alone. Hope you had as much fun watching these experiments as I did making this video. You can click thumbs up if you did. If you want to make your own experiments but don't like the risks and mess often involved with them, I have a great tip for you. My sponsor Brilliant.org is a problem solving website that teaches you how to think like a scientist by performing your own thought experiments. I especially like that they guide you through the thinking step by step, like how I prefer to structure my videos. This way you will be able to arrive at the stunning conclusions on your own. I'm a fan of science and always like learning more about it. If you are a science enthusiast like me, then I highly recommend you go to brilliant.org slash Brainiac75 and sign up for free. As a bonus, the first 275 people using the link will even get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Then you can do more crazy stuff without any safety warnings from me. Thank you for watching. If you are new here, you should consider subscribing. Much more videos to come. I could, for example, try using a CD as a diffraction grating. Let me know in the comments if you want to see me try it. Bye for now.